Hi, this is Dahu. Today I want to show you how to bring together your grooves and your melodies with one simple trick. Okay, let's take a look at this track. I also created a full tutorial for this track that you can check out in the link in the description. When I started producing this track, I started with the drums and I ended up with a pretty nice kind of tech housey groove, a little softer maybe for tech house. I was super happy with it and uh, you know, uh, often I have this problem where I have either the synths done or the drums done and then you have to do the other part which often is the most difficult point. You have to find a way to finish your track without ruining what's already nice about the stuff you already have. When I was trying to finish the track, um, I found these synth one shots that I chained together and transposed a little bit and I really liked the results. So I'll show you what it sounds like here. I really liked these synths I came up with, but they were just burying the drum loop completely. Like all the work I did before was kind of uh, dumpstered by this massive synth. And even if I turned it down, it was just too much of a carpet of sound. So I needed to find a way to bring the drums that I already had and this synth track that I really liked together. So and the way I did this was with gating. So I took this percussive channel, which I already had. Let's listen to it quickly. Kind of a nice groove that um, holds together the drums a little bit here. And I put a gate on both of these synths. Basically what this does is, whenever you have a signal that comes through from this channel, will be fed into these two. So I'm just going to solo this and solo the gate channel. So if you listen to this now, You can see here that this gray part in the bottom is the audio that's coming from this percussion channel. And whenever it exceeds the blue line, this channel will let through sound, otherwise it will be muted. And this is a great way to take this like massive carpet of synths and make it follow the drum channel to make sure they harmonize in the best way possible. So now we've kind of tamed this massive synth sound and made sure it, it, it really um, fits into the drums we already have. I think a lot of people make the mistake that they just latch on to the next thing. You know, they've built these, or I do that as well actually. You build these drums, you really like them, you try to finish the track, then you latch on to the synth sound that you really like, and suddenly you forget about the drums because they're old news. And you just keep doing that, latch on to new ideas and never think about the track as a whole. So I try to avoid that and try to use um, techniques like this to really bring my elements together to make sure I don't, you know, trash all the, all the hard work I've already done. This gate functionality is also a powerful progressional tool. Like you can also really change what the synth is doing over time. And you do that with this hold and release function. So basically, as I already said here, Whenever the input signal exceeds the blue line, you will hear sound. And hold and release, these two parameters will control what happens after a sound is triggered. So hold is basically the length of time that the sound will hold at the original volume and release is the time it will take for it to go back down to zero. So the most powerful parameters for us to automate here are the threshold, the hold, and the release. So this Threshold, if we automate this, the higher the blue line will be, the less often sound will be triggered here. So if we solo this channel and we also solo the percussion channel, just gonna play around with it a little bit. You 
Increasing the threshold slightly will let less sound through. And this can be a, a pretty cool tool, you know, um, to have like a lower threshold in the most energetic part of your track. And then in the beginning or in the end, you can set a higher threshold. That way you'll only have like these bursts uh, of sound that come through once in a while and really like tease the whole thing a little bit or really lead up to, to your main part that way. And let's play with the hold and release and see what that does here. So we can have like a super choppy ARP if we set both very low here. Or we can have basically, if both are set to the maximum value here, sound will just always go through and we'll basically have the same thing we started with. So with this configuration, the gate is actually not doing much. Finally, I did one little thing to make sure that we have the most variation and uh, dynamics possible in our lead synth down here. I added a beat repeat function here onto this percussion channel. Has a high variation and a high chance of triggering. So basically what this means is that um, the intervals in which sound will be sent to these two channels to trigger them will be slightly random. So there will be, um, there will be a level of chance involved, which means that, you know, on the one hand, you want to have total control here. On the other hand, you kind of want to keep it as interesting as possible. And uh, by triggering these two signals uh, with a certain degree of randomness, you, you might, you know, end up in, in really cool places that you wouldn't have thought of yourself, for example. So by playing with the grid, the chance, and the vari variation on this channel, also with the offset and the gate, you can decide, you know, where the beat repeat will trigger. But these signals will be sent right into here, so you can play around with that a little bit and maybe just hit the record button to see if, you know, some, um, some magic happens by itself. This is a trick I use a lot, especially when I'm stuck, usually on tracks where I already have the drums, uh, but can't really get the melody to fit. I hope you get a little bit out of it and try it the next time you have a similar problem. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.